I'm John Feyerabend of the University of Oklahoma, and we're very fortunate today to have Katlin Forai visiting with us from Budapest, Hungary. Katlin Forai is an authority in early childhood music and worked with Zoltan Kodai in the music education system of Hungary for many years. In addition, Katlin Forai will be the next president of the International Society of Music Educators. Welcome. Thank you. We'd like to speak with you a little bit today about Zoltan Kodai and your association with him and ask a few questions about early childhood music as well, if we yeah, may. With pleasure. Uh, what, how was it that you knew Zoltan Kodai? <laughs> my whole family, I would say my father and two brothers and two sisters, they were all musicians and they studied at the Liszt Academy and they knew him. So when I came to the Liszt Academy, I was a well-known little girl. <laughs> from the family and <clears throat> I had already a, a classroom teacher diploma and also a music teacher diploma when I came to the Liszt Academy to study and I told him that I would like to be involved for early childhood music education and he said if you want to do this please at least two more diploma you should get in the Liszt Academy so I did, and I have a choir conductor <laughs> diploma and a secondary school, high school uh, music education diploma He as recommended well. those degrees? Yeah, because he strongly believed that the early music education is very important and we need the good professional mm. musicians to be involved in this early age. Wonderful. Can you tell us something about Kodai as a person? <sighs> he was... Um, very quiet person and he didn't talk too much but what he said it was always very important and very uh, good for us to work for months and months to do something else again or to correct ourselves so he corrected us very often but when he did it was that he meant this he trusts you that you can do it hmm. When yeah. he didn't say a word, that was the best. That was the best. That was agree what we did. <laughs> now, we know that Kodai was a composer of many great pieces of music. Uh, he studied the folk music of Hungary, and he was instrumental in reforming music education in Hungary. What is the, the Kodai method in Hungary? <sighs> I would like to use the expression the Kodai philosophy or Kodai concept, because we should know clearly or make a little division in, in, the, in this concept Kodai method because the method is really the way how the teacher are teaching and he have never been in a school teaching he was a wonderful person already well known in the whole world as a composer as an expert a scientist everybody respect him very much when he and Bartok started thinking about they should do something with the music education because no audiences in the concert halls, no audiences for their compositions. So he was about 48, 50 years old, so he was not a music teacher. But he had a wonderful concept and philosophy how to influence the people and affect the people with music to be a better human being, better well-balanced personality. And it would be very important in our 20th century, through the singing, come closer to each other, and also be better educated through the musical reading and writing. And everybody should have this right to have a good music education. They are so simple, wonderful ideas. And he was a professor at the Liszt Academy for composition, composers. And he had, in a certain age, uh, 13 young composer students who just finished their studium. And he aroused the interest for these people to work for the music education. And that was Jenny Adam, 
Lajos Bardos, good composer, mm. but also they became to the best professors to teach us and generations for many years how to realize Kodai ideas in the school and for me in the kindergarten <laughs> for 40 years. Then the things that we associate with the Kodai method, hand signs and tas and titis, um, movable dough, are these things that Kodai thought of or these are methods that his composition students brought or where did these ideas come from? Oh, he was thinking about and he was searching the different methods which would be the best and the most simple which would be available for everybody not just those who are learning instruments it's important to learn instruments but for everybody in a little village little town everywhere every child should learn should be able to learn this simple one so he found that uh, this movable dough from the from Arezzo e Guido 11th century or using some other ideas from Jöde or Chauve or different kind of good methods. So he and his students, Kerényi, Rajetsky, Bardos, they look for and take out from all kind of good methods the, the best ideas, what they thought is a good idea. Even in America, it was the 19th century, the North America, the movable though well known. Yes. So it's not new for you. But it works very well in a Renaissance. Everybody could sing easily the madrigas, the motetas with a movable do and the do system. But this is not only this one point, this kodai. It is a misunderstood in the word that they say kodai and this is the so me and the ti ti ta. This is just the way and the method how the, his students worked out a sequence for the teaching. And don't forget, this sequence was made for Hungary because he wanted to make Kodai Hungary more Hungarian mm -hmm. and more better educated in music. That was his task. So it's a very interesting interview. A film was made with Erno Daniel. And he asked him, what do you think about that in North America, the people are so much interested in your work? And he said, I wonder because I made it for Hungary and for Hungarian mm. children. So it means what he emphasized so much, every country, it should be adapted somehow. And adaptation means a certain kind of change. Not to do exactly what we worked out and our teacher and good professors for 40, 50 years in Hungary. And it's good for Hungary. Use from these ideas what is international and you, it's good for you too. But it should be based upon your own mother tongue and your musical mother tongue. And not to copy the Hungarian sequence or even the Hungarian songs to translate to other languages. Mm -hmm. No, it's against Kodai idea. He was a linguist too. So we collect our own American folk songs and we should find characteristics from our own music that is typical of our people and we should create some kind of a rhythm and tonal sequence that fits the music of our people. Um, in, in Hungary, that means starting with so me and pentatonic and ta and titi duple music. And you don't get to six eight for a couple of years because six eight's rather foreign to your music. How in American folk music you, you see characteristics that we should be stressing earlier than the Hungarian sequence? I would say all kind of characteristics what you have naturally in your language, which is upbeat and 6-8 includes as well. And of course you have the ta titi and the 2-4 beat, especially for the young one. Mm -hmm. But uh, you should teach it in the school, these musical elements in the sequence earlier than we do in Hungary. Yes. And some other phenomena like 3-4 or something uh, changing meter, which is very typical in Hungarian folk songs, but you don't have as much. Mm -hmm. So the same, in some countries they have already good adaptation, the Kodai concept. For instance, in Japan, they start the musical reading and writing with their own typical characteristic interval, which is the major second, the ta da da la 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 And this is the Kodai concept, because we had in Hungary before the Kodai ideas that the scale system, 
We had to learn the pitch after each other in a scale. That's not Hungarian. It was not. This was a German system. It was not bad for a, as a system. But Koda's idea was that we should start to read and write music with our own characteristics, intervals, and melodical terms and rhythms. That was in Hungary, the so me and so la me. Mm -hmm. But in Japan, it's the redo and the redo la. Mm -hmm. And uh, the French, in French, they have also a wonderful lady, Jaco Trava Ribera, as in Japan, Hani Kyoko. She starts with a so do, do, mi, mi, do, so do. It's more typical for the French intonation, mm -hmm. language in intonation. So I'm sure that you will find, and you already find, some good sequence which fits your Tongue, yeah, mm, language and your musical music and songs. And especially in the emphasis on pentatonic music and I'm wondering, we don't teach minor music, for example, to our students to maybe three or four years of music instruction. And should major and minor, do you think major and minor is more characteristic of our American music than yeah. pentatonic or? Yeah, I would say that the, the goal and the um, uh, the emphasis of the pentatonic is was overemphasized in a Kodai concept in abroad mm -hmm. because it's first of all good for Hungary because the, it's a typical Hungarian melodical term. It is true that young children, for young children, it's easier to sing not too many semitones and half steps mm -hmm. because it's too small and they don't sing in tune. For young children, they should start with the steps which are easier than than a half step mm -hmm. but and you have a uh, lots of songs without half steps but it's, they are not pentaton melodies they are major hexachord melodies which they don't ha have the don't include the half steps but the feeling it is a do feeling is a major feeling. And not having a half step doesn't necessarily mean, for example, a fa can't be in it, but the step from me to fa might not be there. It oh, might be cool. so fa re, and then there's in no half step. In the descending line. Yes. Yeah. So I would say in your music, you should use earlier the fa because you have it, and this is your characteristics. Why not? So it was with, with the best wish and best will overemphasized some things mm -hmm. because the folk music is very important for a certain country but in the middle of Europe in such a small country than we are it was very important and it is important still now to keep your own national characteristics mm -hmm. to survive yes. and be in a con country in your country it's a quite different problem a cultural problem you have your English language, but you have a lot of people who don't speak well English. They just learn English. So it's a multicultural uh, uh, society. is a quite different problem again. Which kind of songs you should be taught as your own national characteristics? Mm -hmm. That's another question. But even with the best wish and the best will, the folk songs are sometimes overemphasized. But Kodai said we should come to the wide music literature. And I mean, uh, the folk songs overemphasize. It means if we have 70% folk songs and 30% composed music, so it doesn't bring us to the wide music literature. Mm -hmm. So it should have a certain good balance between the folk tradition and the, the composed music. Otherwise, the young people, they don't find the right <coughs> way to the <coughs> good music they will have what they have around the whole uh, environment is machine music yeah. and they will receive what they get every day hours and hours but otherwise they get good music and they have experiences with good music they sing it they hear they receive they will have a good taste when they grown up after the teenager age when they have to yeah. move and dance all right but after they will come back to this good music, which makes the human being better and more positive way they can influence us. And Kodai's hope was through music to make people better citizens and better humans. And then he thought that music literacy was a, a, a means to that end, yeah. but not a means in its own end. And not 
overemphasize the techniques and the methods in the teaching procedure. This is my problem and our problem in our country as well. It's overemphasizing the more important, the clapping and singing with sofa, and the Sometimes they forget to sing the song with the words and be happy with the music and just to sing and sing and sing. There's always the very hard work. These techniques are just the aids and the help to come to the music. But when you are singing in the me methods and techniques, this is not a good idea. You shared some videotapes with us of students yeah. in Hungary where we see that joy of music still there and not the overemphasis of techniques. Um, this was Kodai's dream realized in singing schools in Hungary. These were students that had music every day for 45 minutes every day and then finally we could see what would be possible with that kind of music and Kodai's dream realized. Now you know that that's not average in America it's, and in America we are lucky if, if we have music teachers and then if we do, if they have music two times a week for maybe half an hour. Do you think we, sh we could possibly aspire to such fine quality music as we see in your singing schools? Or maybe what should we expect of our, of our American children? What should our goals be? What would we like in Hungarian philosophy or Kodai's philosophy? What should we be striving for in American music schools? I have to tell that this kind of uh level what these children have in this video could I pedagogical legacy is not average in Hungary as no. well just in some schools they have the pleasure to have everyday singing lessons and other schools 45 minutes twice a week plus choir twice two hours choir but <clears throat> I think the main problem is the teacher training I saw teachers in the Hungarian music schools, normal, every schools, uh, elementary schools. The same teacher had so-called singing classes as well and normal, average classes as well. And because the teacher was so good and well trained, you couldn't say in the grade two, it is everyday singing or just twice a week singing because the teacher was so good. Of course, after three, four years, it's they advance faster or have everyday singing. But it depends on the well-trained, musically well-trained teacher. Mm -hmm. And this is a danger to have uh, in North America one or two days Kodai courses. And after two days, <coughs> these people became to be experts in Kodai. <laughs> it's a danger, I would say. If they would be good musically well-trained teachers, they could get ideas in two days. But it is not what Kodai dreamed, to just in two seconds be a good music teacher. Mm. Because we cannot erase it. The culture, we have to work, everybody has to work again for the knowledge and the culture. You have to learn from the beginning. It's a hard work. It's a long procedure. It's not two seconds or two days, years and years practice for the teacher as well. So here in Oklahoma, Norman, I was very pleased with the teacher in my early childhood course. They were very well trained musically and I was very pleased because I could talk to them more clearly. I mean, they understand much more from my suggestions what to do with the young children and early age mm -hmm. because musically they were trained. Mm -hmm. And our children in our schools, uh, should we expect them to be able to sight read lickety split through a choral work by the time they're in fifth and sixth grade too? Or? <laughs> uh, it depends on when do they start because in Hungary we have the children three to six, 96 percent they are in kindergarten and in nursery from school, age three age three to six so a three years procedure and our kindergarten teachers are very well trained musically they are very good mm -hmm. have music and trans examination in college and lots of lessons and also they learn instrument as well so they are able to teach them it means the children come to the school and they have a certain level already they mm -hmm. knew 60 songs and rhymes and they sing in tune and they sing individually in tune and of course not all but mm -hmm. most of the mm -hmm. children 
And this is a great help for the school. And it's not that you're starting reading and writing at age three with them. What, what no, 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 no. Not any kind of visual symbol system, just in the school. It's the preparation in abilities. So maybe you should start in your schools, in a kindergarten, if you have a kindergarten age, uh, the same, just to let them to sing, and through the singing and the games, which belongs the movement and the singing, uh, develop all kinds of musical abilities to prepare them for the school and having the visual symbol system, the reading and writing. And I would suggest not to use too many different kind of visual symbol systems because the goal is the five line and the notation, handwriting. And we have the hand signs all right. We have the sofa letters, that's all right. But some other letters with the dwarfs and the ladybugs and the flowers and two lines and three lines and different kind of techniques we use. And the children have to forget this. Yes. Just to come, when they come to the real true five line and notation, that maybe they are tired and say something again which I have to forget. Yes. And not just the disc to put in, just take the pencil and let them to write. Be brave and trust the children, they can do it, even in twice a week, 30 minutes. Get on with, with the real teacher. music and, and stop overemphasizing the silly techniques. They are not silly, they could be help for a while. I but see. there's another question, how long I uh -huh. use a certain kind of technique, for instance, the hand signs. When they already sing the songs and read the notation fluently, they don't need the hand signs for this. Yeah. The sofa names, yes, it helps even in the Vienna classical to understand the functions and the, which degree you have in a certain major or minor. Yes. The sofa can help. But of course they have to learn the ABC notes, the absolute notes from the beginning. Okay. You saw on the video. Yes. Well, then just a little change of subject. Your specialty is early childhood. When, when should music instruction begin? <laughs> Instruction, I would say, later, much more later than the musical influence to the ah, children. Musical influence. When should That's musical influence begin? <laughs> From the born, I would say, with the language. You talk to your baby, even they don't understand. The same should be, happen with the music. To sing them, to play with them, these beautiful mother gooses, what you have in your country, to wide variety, a wide source for the mothers to make the child happy with the little movements they do with the children and also they sing. It's a wonderful personal contact, beautiful emotional feeling and it has a wonderful climax and happiness about to play these games. I found in your culture, which was a certain kind of phenomenon in Europe as well in the 19th century, to teach the baby to teach the number on the finger, this mm -hmm. is one and two and three, and to, to teach the child it is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all good children go to heaven and yes. these kind of good things. They are not games, not real true games. This is not fun and not the real true art of the child. The art is a certain kind of imagination fantasy situation. You are a little pig and this little pig had the roast beef and none and this little pig went home. Wee, wee, wee. Yeah. So it has a certain kind of tension and uh, solution in the tension is a climax. This is the real true art and mm. this could bring us to the music much better than the teaching purposes when we teach the direction of the child up and down and I step one step and two steps, there you have wonderful, real, true, originally good tradition. And using your tradition for little ones, the babies from the born, the mothers uh, or the caregivers when they are in a certain institution. And also in er early childhood, I mean three to five, they have to be happy with the games. And I do believe that to singing the games and be happy with the games, they all musical abilities they develop, the singing ability, the rhythm feeling, the oral perception, everything through the games, not through the exercises, mm -hmm. the direct teaching goals. What kind of um, 
developmental abilities might we expect of children if they had a rich home environment of a mother that sang and played with them? Uh, by the time they're maybe three years old, what should they be able to do? Three, four years old, that would be the best sign of a good musical impression that they would chant, not to sing the songs. That's just, la, 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 la. They're having own uh, music and own intonation, which comes from the language and be happy with the game that the mother gives me and be open to receive any kind of interesting sounds and colors and forms and proportions and persons in the whole world. It's a, it means these games, these personal games, the child will be more open, mm. open to receive everything and in behave and in emotions as well. And in our culture, we may not be remembering so many of these wonderful, playful things to do with our children. When they arrive in our kindergarten class, or if the school doesn't have kindergarten music in our first grade class, where do we begin with these people that are six years old? That's a good question because it's not easy to, and it's not, no, not so too much meaning to play with the six years old, the lullabies and the little finger plays, it's not for the six years old, uh, they should, they will go through a certain procedure, what we did from the born up to five years old children. It means they should get a lots of good games and movements and personal contact with the teacher. And when they already have a certain ability to sing and receive and watch and move in a good beat unconsciously, after we can do it conscious, and after this consciousness, they can have a certain kind of visual symbol mm -hmm. system, the reading and writing. So it's like our language. We need to be comfortable using our language before we learn to read and write it. Absolutely. And we need to be comfortable mm -hmm. with our musical language. Mm -hmm. Well, I like overall, from, from top to bottom of our discussion here, you keep re-emphasizing the joy of making music. And really, that was Kodai's hope to make people better citizens and better humans through the joy of music making. And I, I think that this was an excellent message, and maybe we need to hear it again and again and again so we don't forget that while we're learning our hand signs and toss and titis, that our children have to have smiles on their faces, too. Thank you for coming and sharing this information with us. It was my pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Let's briefly glance back to see how the children have developed. <laughs> Let's finish by quoting Kodai himself. Below the age of 15, everyone is more talented than above that age. Only exceptional geniuses continue to develop. So it would be an immense pity to miss this talented age. Even an adult will sing differently if he or she retains the memory of childhood enthusiasm for singing. And the child will easily see and remember that there can be no result without conscientious work. What should be done? Singing and music should be taught in such a manner that they shouldn't be a torment but a thing of beauty. This would mean that the thirst for more noble music would be remembered for a lifetime. This shouldn't be sought from a terminological, rational aspect. The road of indirect anticipation should be paved. If the animating spirit of great music is not felt by the child at this most susceptible age, then later it will hardly be felt at all. Often, one single experience will open up a young soul to music for a lifetime. This experience must not be left to chance. It's the task of the school to provide it. Education today is unimaginable without writing. The educational standard of a country is generally measured by the number of illiterate people. This, of course, is not the only criterion. One who can read may still be uneducated. But one who does not possess the basic means of obtaining education cannot even start on the road towards education. The same holds true in music.
Hát ez nagyon csodálatosan sikerült. Rajta! The educational process should not suddenly confront the pupil with a large number of difficulties. Let us give our pupils tunes without semitones. And only when these are done well, should he cautiously be given semitones. Nobody wants to stop at the pentatonic scale. One should in fact start there. For on the one hand, in this way, the child's biogenetic development is natural. While on the other hand, educational logic requires disorder. By spreading the noble tunes of the Hungarian people, one will raise the public's musical taste. It is only here, in these tunes, that the Hungarian language lives its own life. The tune and text that were created together, or that came to be attached a long time ago, extend each other's beauty and strength. The Hungarian linguistic instinct that has started to decline will be provided with a new impetus. Culture cannot be inherited. The culture of our ancestors will soon disappear if each and every generation were not able to regain it again and again. Ours is what we have really worked for, or maybe even suffered for. Music too can only be a real part of us, will only live in us, if we put in an enormous amount of hard work. And this includes music making. Everyone studying to play an instrument should sing first. Free singing without instrumental accompaniment is the true and deep school of musical ability. Initially, musicians should be educated before we educate instrumentalists. Then everything would turn out right. The Hungarian child, more so today than earlier, must come to know an increasingly larger portion of the world. The pupil should also learn everything valuable in the world of music. The best protection is if we hand him what is good. melizmatikus lett a javából. Nagyon jó. Zsuzsika kezdi, mehet. Kéri As long ago as in childhood, I felt that good work leaves some sort of a plus feeling. I felt some type of additional feeling of spiritual salvation. In the repercussion of art, there is something moving. That whenever this is not available, as in the case of non-optimistic art, one feels something lacking. The result of being fed by good art is spiritual health. Deeper musical education always developed only where it was based on singing. Only the human voice, the most beautiful instrument available freely to all, can be the foundation of general musical culture influencing the masses. How much work is needed here for a cultural mission? To make thirsty spirits find out and love the great works of music, which are often available by such simple means.
to show to millions through music and to make them happier and better by it. We must open up the gates to the great foreign masters, whatever nationality they might have been. They can only enrich us. We shouldn't be frightened of Bach and Palestrina. The great foreigners can only help further develop our own national spirit. The personality of the teacher is all important. Individual differences enrich the variety of impressions made on the children. The teacher should follow the method that he or she selects from among those he or she knows, considering it to be the best fitting to his or her own inclination and musical training. It is, however, of paramount importance that the teacher should know the essence, as well as each and every element of the selected method, and that she should be able to implement it in accordance with her own and the student's personality, as well as the nature of the described Hungarian folk music material. Egy-egy rész külön-külön egy-egy modális hangsor valamilyen kis részét adja. Ha én ezeket összefényképezem tehát, mi történik, Jutka? Egy polimodális, kromatikus hangsort kapok. Olyan hangsort, amely külön-külön szolgizálható. We all approach the same musical element in a different manner. We all have different ideas, different methods. There is no single formula for how to teach a musical work or this or that element of it. Everyone must try to match his or her method to the abilities of the child, to the child's own musical education and the given situation. This is precisely the genius of the Kodai method, because it is simply a philosophy. I went to school that I loved the subjects where I liked the teacher so I think that everything depends on the teacher and Hungarian music teachers can be extremely happy that in addition to their own personalities they have also been provided with this excellent guide the Kodai method somewhere the roots are identical which is a starting point but fortunately it can never become identical because it always depends on the person taking the class and on what he or she will emphasize. Köszönöm. Téged megettek, téged leszórtak, te már elégtél, mehetsz alul. Nagy lá, lá, lára! Óriási irattárcsátok a szátokat! Jó, elénekeljük még egyszer ezt a négy szólamú akkord sort, Gyönyörűre, nagyra, mintha egy nagy kupolás terembe énekelnék, és egy nagy zeneműnek a vége volna hatalom. running to all corners of the country, you will become the power lines in the network of our cultural life. Wherever you might find yourself during your life, you will always carry your musical education, your love of music, and at work or at home, the light of musical education will be turned on. This light spreads clarity and warmth, will make your lives and the lives of others more beautiful. <laughs>